Hi everybody, here's a quick video on how to replicate this example uh, using Muse Analysis. This is from De La Motte's uh, The Study of Harmony. And I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to demonstrate this on a Dorico file. Uh, I think most of the functionality in Dorico is going to be pretty much the same in Finale and Sibelius. The, the, essential, um, the essential functions should be the same. But I'm going to walk through this uh, in a in a Dorico file, so you can see the the way that you can enter this kind of material in Muse Analysis. So you can see right here that there are multiple lines of information. Uh, this here is is one whole line. This is another line. This is a third line, and then this um, this capital three here. This is going to be a, a a fourth line of information. So I'm going to move this to the bottom, and I'm going to switch over to my Dorico file. I've already input all of the um, I've already input all the notes, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put these in as lyrics. Let's talk about a, a few settings here. Um, the, the first thing is <clears throat> in note spacing, you want to uncheck this value here to make space for lyrics. Uh, whatever is comparable in Sibelius or Finale, you want to, um, in Finale, you want to turn off automatic, um, automatic music spacing. And I'm not sure what it is in, in Sibelius, but the point is you want to allow lyrics to collide. That's really important. So just uncheck uh, Make Space for Lyrics. That's going to be really important. Um, another setting in uh, Engraving Options and Lyrics, Extender Lines. In the current version of Dorico, you don't have an option to switch off extender lines per se, but you certainly don't want them to appear here. So in order to get around that, set your minimum length for extender line to something like a thousand spaces or something ridiculously high and then extender lines will never appear. There is one more thing that I'm going to do. I think I'm going to set the distance between adjacent line of, lines of lyrics to a slightly higher value. We can always adjust this later easily, but let's try something like two spaces. We'll hit apply and close. Now, the one thing you need to know about lyrics is that for these to align and to move together as one later in engrave mode, it's going to be really important that the lyrics all occur are all occurring in the same voice on the same staff. So in this case, I'm going to use this uh, this tenor voice here, and I'm going to input all of my lyrics here. So I'm going to do this in real time. I may make some mistakes. I'm even getting used to Muse analysis myself a little bit, still acclimating to it. But I'm really going to try to, to not really make any edits to the video or speed things up, because I want to demonstrate how easy I think it is to enter some of this complex material. So shift L for lyrics. The first thing I'm going to do is I need my uh, my key signature and it, it's obviously going to be over to the left so I'm just going to add some hard spaces here that don't break. That would be shift alt space. I'm going to add eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Should be enough. And then I'm going to add D4. Let's hop off there a second. You see that when I do that uh, presently this is all going to be, this is center aligned. Um, I'm actually going to uh, change that alignment now, um, and you know you have to sort of you have to sort of go back and uh, you have to continue you have to continue changing it in Dorico 3.5.12, which is the version I'm using. When you make edits to the lyrics, uh, they they jump back to their default alignment. Uh, Daniel has said that this functionality is going to change in the next version, which I think will be very welcome. Um, so for now, uh, you could either you could either, as you go, you could either fix some of the alignment, or you could simply go back later and do it. I should probably do the second way, but I probably won't be able to resist fixing them as we go. Uh, next, I'm going to go over to, um, I'm going to enter this 3 here, so just Shift L and 3. Oops, uh, Shift L, Shift L and 3. Uh, numbers are automatically superscript if they're individual numbers. Then T. Uh, then here, this is uh, dr3, so dr, and then for 3, for a subscript 3, I'm going to use the, the grav um, prefix and 3. See, that gives me a dr3 like I want. And then a 7, um, and then a uh, te capital R. At this point, I'm going to stop and address this, uh, this line underneath. This is actually fairly easy to draw in Muse Analysis. Um, what you're going to do in front of this is you're going to use the prefix exclamation point. Um, you can remember that by thinking, wow, this is amazing, uh, if you want. 
and then if I if I would do a um, oops a single bracket, it would give me a, a very short line underneath. But I can do a couple brackets. I'm going to do uh, three brackets. See when I do that, it gives me a longer a longer line underneath. I'm also going to do it at the end of this one exclamation point and three right brackets. And when I do that, you see that I get this. Now of course these are not aligned, so I told you I wouldn't be able to resist. So I'm going to move the alignment over now. Uh, so that these look correct. Now you say, what if it was something like this and I needed more space? Well, in that case, what you could do, I, actually, I'll demonstrate that by making this one shorter. Let's say that I had only done these and these weren't quite going to, they weren't going to join, obviously. What I could do is I could navigate to any of these positions in between and I could insert a long line uh, using exclamation point and C for center, a centered line. Let's do that. When you do this, you see what we get. Of course, again, the alignment's off. Uh, you see that we get as uh, we get a line. Now, obviously, this isn't quite enough to join, so let's do a couple more. Let's try three of them. Um, see, now you have uh, now you have a line, and we need to um, we need to center this uh, lyric alignment. Yeah, there we go. Uh, now the line is too long. See, so so let's just do two. Let's try that and center or left line. All right, there we go. So this is, um, there's, a, there's a couple different ways then that you could have these things that overlap in the way that you want. But you probably find it easier to, to try to join the lines by using these guys as much as possible. So that's the way that I'm going to do it. Oops, let me go back to this guy here. I'm going to remove this one. And I'm going to go to this one. Two of them here. And then let's set all three of these um, to be left aligned. There we go. So now I still have a little bit of work to do. Obviously, I want to center that. Um, you're going to have a little bit of adjustment anyways. There's no way around that. But the nice thing is, as long as you don't edit this anymore, it will retain that position. And that positioning is tied to its its rhythmic location. So, uh, so you have a lot of control then about making things align underneath the beat exactly as you want them. I'm going to switch back to right mode and uh, finish entering these. T. Um, S7, D. Now for this one here, <clears throat> it's actually common for the tonic, dominant, and subdominant functions, both major and minor, rather than having the, num the number to show the inversion as a subscript, it's actually common to have, I'm, I'm told, now to have the number directly underneath the letter. So you can accomplish that using the ampersand prefix, put the, put the number, and then put the, the letter, and that'll <clears throat> that'll place the that'll place the inversion number um, directly underneath. So S3. What this means is it's a um, it's a subdominant and it's a minor chord because it's a small s. And the third is in the bass, so it would be a it would be a, a four six chord. Uh, next, we're going to go on here. Now this D. If I just went six four, you see that that the six and four stack automatically. However, the way that they have it here they actually have these in an upper position. So that's the way I'm going to do it as well. And the way that you would do that is this is essentially a triple stack of numbers, which you always need, almost always need to prefix with a, a percent sign. Uh, and then when you do 6-4, you see that then it moves it up, and the, the last space there is left empty. Uh, same thing here. The 5-3 is in an upper position, so I'm going to go 5-3 like that, and then percent 7, and so you see again the 6, the 5, and the 7 are all aligned and T. Now let's do, I think this looks pretty good, now let's do the next line. Um, so for my next line I'm going to use the bracket. I'm going to insert another hard space here just to provide a little more space between the bracket and the 5. 5, 4, and then 2, a 3. Um, again you can see that this is close and I told you I couldn't resist. I'm going to need to move this back and I'm going to align the 4's and the 3's. Let's keep on going. Uh, the one here we've got a, um, a five or a seven six a seven six five and a three and I'm going to go ahead and fix these now just kind of move them over a little bit so that they're so they have the space they need because remember I have unchecked uh, the option to make space for lyrics okay I'll keep on going um, the one, oops, and you can see that because I, um, because this thinks it's a melisma, uh, it's now center aligned, so I actually want, or it's left aligned, I actually want to center align it. 
Um, let's keep on going. Uh, the four seven, the five, the four six, the five six four. Now here, uh, because this is Roman numeral analysis, the I do want these numbers to stack uh, to be centered on the five. Uh, then the five three, then the seven, and the one, and I'll add uh, an extra space. Uh, so there we go, and I'll go ahead and make that adjustment now. Okay, for the third line, I'm just going to go to my 7-6 chord, and I'm going to start there. Um, so hit enter, and down. So now I've, I've got a couple things that I want to put in. I have my parentheses, and actually in Muse Analysis 1.3, I just added a slightly larger parentheses. Uh, it's an at parentheses. I'm going to put in um, hard space. Let's do two hard spaces. Then I'm going to do my 5-6 chord. But before that, I'm, I'm going to remember I'm going to do what I did before, and that's that um, where I put in the, you know, the, the bracket underneath. Let's kind of see where that gets me. Okay, so that's, yeah, I'm need, going to need more spaces there. Uh, let's see here. So let's add a couple more. See where that gets me. Yeah, that's better. Let's just go ahead and move that over. So that one's fine. Um, so I have this, or I did two brackets. Let's go ahead and do um, two more. I think I can have four brackets. Yep. And we'll put that one over where it needs to be. Um, now I can go ahead and do my my next figure. So I have a, a 565 and then I have a 1 and that 1 also has some brackets to the side of it so these are, these don't have to be very long at all. I'll do 2 and and then my um, my close parentheses like this. Let's see where that gets me. Okay so let me move this one over um, by the way, sometimes if items overlap, it can be very hard to click on exactly the thing you want. So for that, uh, this has always been in Dorico, where you have something called Alt-Shift or Option-Shift-Click, which allows you to click and keep clicking until you get the thing that you actually want. And so that's that's what I'm doing here. See, this, uh, this line underneath is still a little long, so this is still just me getting used to the program, to uh, Muse Analysis here. That's pretty good. So let's line that up. And then this one, we'll go ahead and do three brackets. So I should have known all along that three brackets was probably the way to go. Uh, so there we go. So now I'm lined up. I can move, I can move this um, this one over a little bit. I can move this one over, and that's all set up. This one actually could use another couple spaces. And of course, I got to move it over again. But again, remember on the future versions of Dorico, these, um, when you edit the lyric, it's not going to jump back to its, it'll, it'll keep whatever positioning you had, you had originally, and so that'll be a good thing. Uh, and so this is the last one that we need here. Let's go back to our um, 565 five and go down, and let's do three. Um, so that's the last one. So let's take a look at that here. Let's see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now, now in, in this case, this is where I could move down an entire line. See, this is where I can adjust my spacing in a way that um, that looks good, and it'll move it'll move everything the same amount. Okay, so this is um, this is that example. Pretty easy to replicate. Okay, um, here's another example that I'm going to do, and this one has a few more things in it that are a little trickier. Uh, not that much more difficult to achieve, but just show a few more of the things that you can do in Muse Analysis. I'm going to do example E here. I think this is from a Bach Chorale. It's in the key of D. You've got some extender lines here. You've got some backwards pointing arrows. And you have the, um, the diagonal slash, the angled slash, to indicate secondary dominance. Right, here's the music. Um, I've, already, I've already input the music, and I've actually... I admit I've uh, I've practiced this one. Um, I practiced this one before. Um, I just wanted to make sure that it worked right, and I didn't embarrass myself on the camera. All right, so, so here we go. First, I want to look and I want to make sure that that I can find a voice to input my lyrics at that where all the rhythmic positions are represented. 
For example, I couldn't use the tenor voice this time because I'm going to need to input something here. Um, so it's not going to be represented at the right place. Um, so in, in a case like this, I'm just going to use the um, I'm going to use the bass voice. That's going to work fine. So let's start to input some lyrics. D colon, and I'm going to do eight spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a D. Um, and I, this time I'm really going to try to wait to fix my spacing for one, one shot. Let's see if I can do it. Uh, so the T is fine, obviously. Now, what do you do in a case like this? This is a long extender line. Um, and for something like this, there's a couple different ways I could do it. Um, I think for the T, I'm, I'm actually going to do the way that the modern way I think of showing it, which is to place the number underneath. So I'm going to go um, ampersand 1 T. You can see that that's going to give me the, um, the one underneath. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to return to that. And now I want to make this long extender line. There's a couple ways I could do it. And the easiest way is simply by entering the, the question mark. Um, and now I said I wasn't going to do this, but I have to because I need to know exactly kind of where I get here. This is my goal. So I could probably go a little further. So that's one way you could do it, using the question mark. You could also use this um, percent feature. And so if this is a, a line at the middle position, I could go SLS, uh, percent SLS, percent SLS. It's a space at the top position, a line in the middle position, and a space in the bottom position. Percent SLS, percent SLS. And you say, well, why, why would you want to do it this way? Well, the reason is because you might wish to have all sorts of variations. Um, I may want to have a number right here or something. So let me show you an example. SL4. Um, see, this gives me this gives me a number at that rhythmic position. So there's all sorts of different ways that I could um, that I could achieve that. But I'm just going to go back and make these all be SLS, and that actually gets me pretty close to where I want to be. I'm actually going to get rid of one of them. There we go, let's try this. And yeah, I lied, I am going to go back and fix it manually. There we go. Um, so my resolution here is, um, my resolution here is the line, a backtracking line with a three underneath. So for this one, um, I'm, it's, it's going to be a triple stack. So it's a space, a line, and a three, SL3. So that part's fine, but you see that obviously it doesn't connect here. And rather than just trying to guess at it, I could make a backtracking line that backtracks from here and overlaps this line so that if my note spacing changes some or I want to make little adjustments, that's no problem. I know that they're going to overlap. Um, so in order to do a backtracking line, I'm going to use an exclamation point. Um, and then if it were a double stack, I would do a two. But it's a triple stack, so I'm going to do a three. And is it line A, line B, or line C? Well, it's line B. And let's do a couple of them, B, B, B. When, you, when I do that, you see that I get a long, and yeah, 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 it's, it's, um, it's all wrong. It's all out of the way. OK, and I see a little, you see I get this backtracking line that allows me to overlap. And I see that I actually have an error in the font that I'm going to correct as soon as this video is over, um, because the line is supposed to join up with, this backtracking line is supposed to join up, and it doesn't. So I'll just have to fix that. I'll have to fix that later. Anyways, these were too many Bs. Let's go back and do that. There we go. And let's just kind of move this over. So, anyways, this is so you can see that again. I have an error, and I I need to I need to reduce the space here to make sure it overlaps. Um, but that is that's the way that I'd produce this overlapping line. For now, I'm going to cheat. Uh, I'm going to cheat here, and I'm just going to um, I'm going to extend this line like that. And lo and behold, uh, it's going to it's going to cover it but don't tell anybody. All right, so that's this part. Now I've got, um, back to my lyrics, I've got parentheses, D7, that's a piece of cake. Um, then S, then uh, again, you could do T Grav 3, which would be fine. Um, but in this case, I'm going to use an ampersand um, 3t and actually display it underneath. Uh, and then here we've got a we've got a parentheses, and I'm also going to put the three underneath the d, so um, ampersand 3d, and then it's followed by a superscript seven. So it looks funky, but there we go, it works. 
Now I've got SR, um, and I'm going to do a little space, and then I'm going to do I'm going to do a less than sign and a couple of question marks. Now, when I do that, you'll see that I I do indeed get this um, I do indeed get this arrow which I want, but I'm also going to at this position I'm going to use the backtrack feature rather than trying to guess at the length of the arrow. I might make it a little longer, but um, but rather than guessing at the length of the arrow, I'm going to backtrack from here. So, so let's enter it here. I'm, I've got a D, but before that, oops, before that, I'm going to use the exclamation point and question, 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 which is going to take me back a little bit. So now, now I've got this line, and actually, you know, in this case, I don't actually need it, do I? Anyways, I've got it if I want it. I've got this line that allows me to backtrack. Maybe I should shorten. Maybe I should shorten this one a little bit. Yeah, let's do that to make sure it doesn't uh, doesn't cross into the D. So you can see it does take a little getting used to, but the point is that you are able to perfectly align things that you want, and you you don't have to kind of worry that your line is going to break. Uh, almost finished. Here we've got um, ampersand three D seven parentheses and S, uh, and then. Let's fix this one now. And let's go down. So we've got um, parentheses. Let's do a space and a V. One, one, six. Uh, now for this one, it's a five, seven. If I just did this, I would get um, the baseline. But if I do two slashes, you see that I get. Uh, an angled slash, which in this case is perfect because I need that space. Yeah, things are just a little tight. Um, one six. Same thing here. I'm going to go five six five double slash to two. Um, and then here again, I've got this two um, less than sign. Let's do two question marks. Um, and then here we've got a, a five of two. And before it, I'm going to put couple question marks to get me back. Let's see, let's see if that's enough. What do we got? Ooh, that's not going to be enough, is it? Be this many. There we go. There's a limit on how many of those you can you can do. All right. So there we go. And if I wanted to, of course, I could make this one. Maybe I will make this a little bit longer. And let's move him back over to where he needs to go. Again, a lot of this work once um, the new feature in Dorico comes out that leaves lyrics in the position that you put them, a lot of this back and forth work will become uh, a lot easier. Oops. Ah. Oops. Undo, undo. Let's go down this way. There we go. Because when you hit spacebar to advance, it resets the spacing. Four and four. Oops. All right. And last step, I'm just going to move this down a little bit. Let's shift this over as well, just to get, just like I, so it appears just right. All right, there we go. Uh, so that's how you would do this using Muse Analysis. Ah, one more. Um, I hope you found this rather informal video helpful. If it would be helpful for me to do more videos on certain other features, please let me know, and I'll be happy to do it. Thanks.